judge asked me, what are you doing? And I said, I'm going to end up killing myself if you don't help me. Unfortunately, I've been chasing this epidemic in New Jersey of heroin abuse for over a year now. My most recent chase, it took me to Crawford House. It's a halfway house for women in Skillman, New Jersey, where I sat down with Joyce, a 32-year-old mother and recovering addict. Uh, she started using heroin at 27 after becoming addicted to prescription painkillers. And by the time she hit rock bottom, she was using PCP and cocaine as well. And during that time, she says that she was willing to do the unthinkable to get high. I ended up selling myself on the street. I ended up stealing from my family. Dyfus got involved and eventually she gave up custody of her two youngest children in a closed adoption. She can never see them again until they are adults and if they choose to see her. Mm -hmm. When searching for drugs one night, she was brutally raped. I was trying to cop drugs and I was taken at knife point. Um, then two weeks after that, I signed the adoption papers for my children and Two weeks following the adoption, uh, my best friend had, who was also caught up in addiction, had taken a gun to his head, and I watched as he killed himself. Ultimately, she wasn't eating, she wasn't bathing, she wasn't even getting out of bed. I saw my mother, and she told me she didn't want to bury her daughter, that it wasn't natural. And she asked me, what is it that I wanted her to do? And I, I looked her in the face, and I told her to just say goodbye that I wasn't worth saving at that point. Thankfully, Crawford House has changed her life and helped her through recovery. Uh, she showed me her room where she stays with three other women. Uh, she keeps the footprints prayer posted to remind her that God will carry her through this. I got this flower at a Trinity meeting from a woman with 52 years sobriety. And I look at it every day to get hope. And she said that if she could speak to her two children that have been adopted, she would apologize. To my younger two, I would say I'm sorry and that I did the best thing that I could for them and that I love them very much. And if I had to do it again, I would just so they wouldn't feel the pain. This is not a legislative problem. This is an economic problem. Here's why. The market is flooded with heroin. Reports just a day or two out of Pennsylvania that say it's cheaper to get a packet of heroin at 5 or $10 than it is a six-pack of good beer. How do you battle that kind of problem? Veronica, what point is it personal responsibility? You know, at 27 years old, you'd think someone would know better than you're making this choice. Are you trading the heroin high for your kids? Right. Well, it started with that addiction to painkillers, and that's where I think the conversation needs to start with maybe less prescription of these very highly addictive painkillers that doctors can just hand out. Well, the problem with addiction and what makes it so complicated is that many people consider it an illness. It's not really a choice. So once you remove choice, then it's not personal responsibility. What the person needs is help. I'm not speaking to Joyce in particular, but one thing that Linda did say to me is she said this certainly isn't a broad brush but a lot of the addicts we see are children of addicts and that it is a cycle that continues and that makes it even more complex. Either way, I mean, we're, we're thinking about Joyce and certainly her kids and praying for them and I, I hope she gets the opportunity to make that apology in person. Me too. Good.